skimpily dressed high school kids give administrators lap dances, mom wonders why people are upset. And yeah, let's keep pretending there are no consequences to showing five-year-olds drag queen shows. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. We are the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today's show is sponsored by Mike Lindell and our friends at MyPillow. MyPillow is always offering great deals and this week it's their BOGO buy one get one deal on their Giza Prime cotton sheets. That's buy one get one free. And all you have to do is use the code Dr. Duke, D-R-D-U-K-E. Visit MyPillow.com and you will save up to 66% on all other items as well. Before we start, if you're watching us on social media, please hit that share button to keep more people educated and let's dive in. So yeah, I, I think you heard the, the headlines pretty clear and loud. Boy, today we start in Kentucky of all places where a high school's homecoming week went viral after students were filmed giving lap dances. This is male students dressed as women, girls, giving lap dances to teachers and even the mayor of the town got himself a lap dance. So it's not just that the mayor got a lap dance, it's that the mayor is also the principal of said school. We're talking about Hazard High School in Kentucky and the local newspaper reported on what actually happened. It was homecoming week and usually there's like a pep assembly. I, I think we've all been to high school and you know have had pep assemblies. I guess mine never included any sort of a lap dance ever. We embarrassed our teachers and the principal, but not via lap dances. And it's not just the boys who are dressing up as girls and then doing the lap dances. The girls were wearing Hooter shirts and carrying beverage vessels that appeared to be like they were carrying beer. Now, hopefully they weren't carrying beer, but we're not quite sure. But meanwhile, the principal slash mayor, and he goes by Happy is his name, Happy Mobellini. Like as in happy ending Mobellini, is that what we're dealing with? I, I don't know. But anyway, this was part of the man pageant, as they say. Man and pageant. It was man pageant and costume day. You know, so clever. But anyway, this is what happened. Uh, his name, by the way, is Donald, if we want to call Donald. him Donald. But Donnie happy, happy. Donnie, happy Mobellini. Donald Happy. Uh, he's the, the mayor in, of, of Hazard as well. So let's just take a look at what actually happened. The school is celebrating homecoming week. Yesterday was costume day featuring a man pageant. Multiple pictures were posted and taken down from the school's athletics page. They appear to show students giving lap dances to faculty and staff. Some pictures show female students dressed in Hooters costumes. Other pictures show students and staff paddling each other. One person featured in the pictures is Principal Donald Happy Mobellini, who is also the mayor of Hazard. Oh, he just so happens to also be the mayor. In Kentucky, only in Hazard County. This is like the Dukes of Hazard, isn't it? This, this is where the General Lee actually got its start. Look, a couple of points about this. Let's just take this from the lens of political correctness. Let's just play the, the, the woke game for a second. So once again, this demonstrates how easy it is for boys to erase girls, right? So boys are the ones and the man pageant. Boys are the ones wearing girls clothing. Boys are the ones who are assuming the so-called female role and giving lap dances to adult men in really kind of cringeworthy ways. You got the kid in there in the middle is twerking. You got, I don't know what the hell's going on in the picture on the right, but then you got a young man with his hands all over the rather copious belly of another employee of the school. So how easy it is, again, for boys to slip into the role of girls, doing things that we would never allow girls to do in this circumstance. Girls then become relegated, where are the feminists? The girls then become relegated to Hooters waitresses serving on the boys, serving the boys and the lap dance ease with seemingly mugs of beer. I mean, so women then become completely subordinated and how in the world anybody thinks this is okay is beyond me. And if you want to say, oh, come on, they can dress as they want and it's fine. How do you explain then at least the paddling portion of That's, uh, this pep assembly, <laughs> the man pageant? What does paddling the administrators and the teachers and giggling about it via the students, what does that have anything to do with 
Urarago team. And interestingly enough, the athletics page, which is what had the photos initially, took these photos down. It did. If, if, if it's so perfectly fine, why don't they just say, hey, we do this, we're going to leave these photos up, it's perfectly fine. But no, they took them down, and the actual superintendent of the Hazard Independent Schools, Sandra Combs, said that the incident because it's an incident, is being investigated. And once the investigation is complete, appropriate action will be taken. But hey, some people say we're being the prudes here by saying maybe they shouldn't have been doing this. And some people are saying, hey, maybe we are, it's okay to be a prude in this action. We'll talk about that next. No, before we move on, because we're going to be staying where we were, just a reminder that if you enjoy our content, please consider joining the Patriot Club. Your tax-deductible donation does keep the lights on around here, so simply visit patriotclub.us to get signed up. That's patriotclub.us. And of course, as a special thank you, we will ship you our Patriot Tumblr that is not etched with a Hooters girl or a man pageant participant, just the muscular lightness of George Washington. And we're going to stay at our little pep assembly here because we want to talk about moms. And moms, they're there to support you in good times and in bad. But sometimes moms, they should really give you a little tough love and, and maybe not support you. But we, we have a mother who is very supportive of what her son did in participating in the man pageant there in Hazard. Holly Lane, yes, that's her name. Holly Lane's son participated in the Hazard High School man pageant and decided to talk to the local news about her son's actions and his, with his friends. And you know, she was very annoyed, is her term, at the homecoming event even made the news. Like, why would that even happen? It has been taken completely out of context. There are only photos being shown on the internet, no videos. So the photos don't show the teachers pushing the children off of them. Lane's sons and his friends participated in the homecoming event. She says pushing the limits and embarrassing teachers is part of the fun. If everybody is perfect, then I would say, yeah, maybe we need to rethink something. But until somebody can prove that something is going on here, other than just homecoming week and teenagers being teenagers, then I'll, I'll support my kids. What mom says there is kind of puzzling to me. If anybody can say that there's more going on than what was seen in the pictures, that the context would make a difference, how much more cringeworthy would it be to see that picture acted out? You, you think it's going to be less cringe mom, cringeworthy, Mom, to see the kid actually humping up against the thigh or twerking? That, that's, seeing the video of that, is this going to make this more palatable somehow? And even if you look at those images, if you, just from the images, it's not, even if the teachers who were directly uh, involved were the ones pushing the kids off, you can see in the, the picture on the far right there, Happy is very happy and giggling at the fact that there is a boy uh, wearing a crop top and short shorts about to dance on a pole. So it's, it's being supportive by being happy about it as he is. So it, even if you had video, I think it would just be worse, worse. Mother Holly Lane. Yep. But hey, you know. And, and not only that, not only would it be worse if you had the video, the other problem is, is that why is anybody dancing up on the girls? I mean, that's what the video might show this. Are any of these boys dressed as girls actually lap dancing female teachers? That's another issue. I don't get the impression that is, but what kind of message does that send? That the only ones sitting, the only teachers sitting there getting lap danced are male teachers. That's another oddity of all of this that would have to strike one as odd. I, I mean, fun is fun, us, I, I suppose, but it, it, on top of everything else, it seems to me like another way, not just to allow boys to take away women's roles, but to, uh, uh, but to, erase girls altogether. I mean, the whole idea seems to me to be very, on one hand, it's exactly the kind of thing you would see at a at one of those library at one of those library drag queen shows. What is the purpose of that? I, I hit the teaser with this, right? If you're going to start with kindergarten or five year olds going to the library, public library, to see men dancing and humping on each, uh, each other like you see at a typical drag queen show, then do you, are we surprised that by the time we get to this point that this kind of stuff seems actually normal? And it kind of does seem normal. Now, as we know, the internet gets involved in these situations where you have half the people saying, 
this absolutely should not be happening in the school and some saying hey take a chill pill this is just what they do um like lauren m on twitter who said that you know most high school pep rallies have some type of spoof on their teachers or coaches no one knows how to have fun and laugh anymore if one person is offended just shut it down you could take that in a if one person of anything maybe gets something happening involving police and something else happens, everything else gets shut down. I'm not going to go down that alley now. But in this instance where you have a mother coming out to support her son and his friends by stating that you don't know the full context because you only saw those images and those images pretty much say a thousand words. It, the, the point is, this isn't the first time it's happened either. That's what was so the controversy when you're saying, oh, you took it out of context. Well, the context is that this happens every year, seemingly, at least the past couple years. And we actually have the video from a different man pageant where, again, Mobilini was involved. And, hey, he seemed to enjoy what was happening when a student did the lovely song Touched Like a Virgin by Madonna. <laughs> All I got to say is that dude, that boy, has the longest arms I've ever seen. It's okay. like a spider crawling across the floor. And for the absolute record here, I'm not offended. I don't think Katie's offended. It's just puzzlement. It's what? Why? Is it necessary? What is the... Pr and w ex explain to me this, Katie. It clearly, it was homecoming week for girls' athletics, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Not just the boys. What are you doing to honor girls? What, why are girls, again, relegated to serving beer and Hooters t-shirts? W where is their opportunity to spoof? It, the whole thing just comes across as way... As, as, you know, it's almost beyond p parody. The left is almost beyond parody. This is almost like an attempt to try to parody left-wing stupidity it, that falls flat on its face. It's not offensive necessarily. It's just bizarre. And it's not even like left or right or anything. It's just, if your kids go to school, they're going to school to get an education. And I loved homecoming week. I loved the fun of it. But at what point do you say, this is just not appropriate and I call me a prude I I'm not offended I'm just very turned off by having to see this why can't kids you know do pies in the face of the teachers or just do something silly not sexual why I, must it be sexual 550 or how many of our shows we've done of this of the Dr. Duke show well over 500 probably approaching 600 episodes now and I I just don't I just want to do one story just one before I die of somebody taking seriously what goes on in classrooms. So some, some actual story about learning. Can we have one of those at some point, anytime? And they're just not out there. The, school, the last thing the schools wanna talk about is actually academic achievement. Now, one comment I didn't get to talk about was by someone named Michael. And it was just, I think, the perfect transition into the story we're about to talk about. He says, I so agree with you. Shows us how sad our society is that grown adults think sexual exploitation is okay in school. Here, I thought school was for learning. Next, there will be field trips to strip clubs. Well, <laughs> you're getting very close to that, where, at least in Florida, they decided to take elementary kids to a gay bar for a field trip. I mean, we're getting, we're getting closer, almost hitting the nail on the head in that one. So if you're five years old, you want to get into a gay bar, the time to do it, during school, during your field trip. So Wilton Manors Elementary School in Broward County, Florida, of Broward County, took their elementary school students to Rosie's Bar and Grill. It's, it's a little gay bar, and it was obviously for the field trip that they took, and hey, they do it every year. It's a thing. And of course, they get the permission slip signed. So this is just like a totally normal thing to do. But when the images got put out on the internets, people were like, huh, why are we taking a bunch of school-age children to a gay bar on a field trip? You may be wondering the same thing. So uh, we only found out about this because the pride that was within a school board member who got to chaperone. Broward County School Board member Sarah Leonardi, she tweeted out the pictures and said how proud she was. I was so honored to be invited to chaperone 
the field trip to the incredible Rosies. The students and I had a fun walk over and learned a lot about our community. <laughs> well, Broward County Schools decided to come out with their own statement, and I'm going to read it in its entirety. If you must interrupt me, you can, but I want you to hear the whole thing. Wilton Manors Elementary School offers a unit of inquiry called How We Organize Ourselves. In the unit, students learn about neighborhood safety, community helpers, the importance of being a community member, what it takes for a community to be successful, different jobs in a community, and social skills when interacting with others. They also visit a local restaurant, Rosie's Bar and Grill, which is within walking distance from the school and opens early for the students. The bar and restaurant was not open to the general public while students were present inside. When the business opened, Students transitioned to a separate outside location to order and eat their meals. The students order their meals from a student-friendly paper menu that has three child-friendly choices. And then they provided them the menu. They learn about the types of jobs involved in operating a restaurant, how to pay for their meal, and how to leave a tip for the service they receive. In addition, as part of the field trip, the Wilton Manors Police Department provides traffic assistance for the students so they can see and learn about the different ways police officers support the community. So everything about the gay bar was er erased. Here's another, look, I I'm not on the side of the gay bar here. It's a free country. You can know, have a gay bar if you want one. But every, if I were part of the gay community, I would be arguing, why did you take them to a gay bar and then erase all the symbols of gayness when they're, the children are given a child-friendly menu. I mean, can you imagine what ordering a hot dog would have been like during the regular gay clientele? What they had to change that to, to make it gay-friendly for the kids, right? Uh, the little Frankfurters. I can only imagine what they called those sandwiches when you had your gay friends there, right? But to, do, to, to, to go out of your way to take them to a gay bar and then to la label all the ways you de-gayified it for the kids, doesn't this just defeat it and why are you taking five-year-olds on community missions like this what is the purpose for a kindergartner age five w what are they going to take away from this anyway that has you, you what was it katie called in the very first sentence we, 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 spaces how, how how we organize ourselves how we organize ourselves for five-year-olds okie dokie knock yourself out it's just one more example of using school resources to do anything but school All right, it's time for some real education. And given how utterly and completely and thoroughly we are prone to seeing public schools not even worrying about school anymore, let's take the Vatican, which is the center of Roman Catholicism for about 1.4 billion Catholics, and let's turn it into something else, because that's what the public schools are doing. Let's look at the oddities of the Vatican this week. So Vatican City, also known as the Vatican City State, is a landlocked and independent city-state located within Rome. The Vatican became independent from Italy as its own separate entity in 1929, and it is a distinct territory under full ownership, exclusive dominion, and sovereign authority and jurisdiction of the Holy See of Rome. It is uh, a diplomatic and spiritual independence with an area of 121 acres. That's all. I would have thought it was much bigger. 121 acres is all that Vatican City co uh, is comprised of and a population of 825 people or so. It is the smallest state in the world, both by area and population. So this is kind of an interesting place to begin with. And then we go back and look at some of the oddities of this wonderful little uh, city-state. Go ahead and take a look at the images. This is what's known as the Cabinet of Masks, one of the attractions of the Vatican. The Cabinet of Masks is named for its elaborate mosaic of masks that make up its floor. The mosaics were created from pieces of the Roman Emperor Hadrian's villa in Tivoli. Architect Alexander Dory dedicated one of the Vatican's halls as a museum in 1772. Eight years later, the hall was completely reconstructed by papal architect Michelangelo Simonetti. The hall is filled with elaborate stucco decorations and oversized paintings, but it's the floor, and you can see right there the beauty of that floor. All around the circle there, that statue in the middle, 
Michael, you see these beautiful mosaics taken from literally the marble mosaic tiles from Hadrian's Villa. Uh, quite beautiful, and one whole room is dedicated to this in the Vatican. The Vatican, the hall is filled with elaborate stucco decorations to oversized paintings, but it's the floor of the cabinet of masks that is the most famous. However, statues like the magnificent Three Graces are also housed here, so you could walk around this room. You could enter this room, you would never know you were in the largest church in the world. You would never know from the Roman, the, the uh, architecture, the colonnade there. You would not know from the, uh, the pagan subject matter of what's in that Rome. You would think you were in a Greek temple, only one made to look like a Christian church. All right, before we go, let's show some love to our Patriot Club members. And today, the shout out goes to Carol from Morristown, New Jersey. Carol, thank you for supporting us. And that's our show for Freedom Project. I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, stay educated, my friends. Oh,